Hi guys, so a few tips when writing your final papers where you'll need to write a new discussion section and a new abstract for your paper, um, as well as revise all the other sections. So I'll first make a note that scientists go through many, many, many drafts. I think whenever I publish, I have at least 20-something drafts that I've gone through. So I'm just pointing that out to let you know that you should go beyond your instructor's comments, right? If they put in some track changes or comments about specific sentences, um, please fix those. But additionally, try to take those and extrapolate to how to fix similar instances throughout your paper, and then also go through with fresh eyes for your paper, try to improve upon it, um, relook at it, right? You wrote those intros before you had done all of your experiments, so you might realize now you ended up using a mutant you hadn't discussed in the intro, so you might want to bring that up. So please don't just do simple corrections. We truly want revisions for those sections. And also, of course, the abstract and discussion. All right, so whenever you think about writing your discussion, it should kind of go almost the opposite as an intro. So if an intro is generally a funnel like that, where you start out with your big picture and work down to your specific research question, the discussion will do the opposite. All right, so just a quick note on the intro. So perhaps your very specific question was comparing wild type and CX4 mutant worms and whether they were equally able to avoid a pathogen, serratia. All right, so that's your very specific question. Um, one level up of abstraction, right, might be, well, is the CX4 pathway involved in pathogen avoidance for C. elegans? All right, well, what bigger question is that really part of? Mm, maybe pathogen avoidance in general, right? So we're widening um, to more general, more important questions as we get further away from our specific question. And that really ties into, say, overall survival, something like that, okay? So your intro would open up with the importance of overall survival and figuring out how to avoid these potentially deadly pathogens and then what um, molecular pathways could potentially be involved in this. Maybe it's the CX4 pathway. And to address this question, we therefore did XYZ studies in C. elegans, right? Your discussion will almost do the opposite. You're going to start narrow with your specific questions and findings and then broaden it out to help lead your reader back to place your findings in the broader field so they can contextualize why this big question or this broad field cares about your findings. How does this contribute to the big question scientists are working on? All right, so maybe your discussion, you start by pointing out the main findings that you just went through in results. Right, so reiterate your important findings as you talk about each. Um, perhaps you could go a little bit deeper um, into those findings. So not just reporting the trend like you did in results, but why might you have found this trend? Um, or here's where you can extrapolate, although we did not achieve a significant p-value for this experiment, we did see a trend that looked like the worms preferred OP50, and we believe that if more replicates were performed, we would see this trend carry out and get a significant p-value, right? So even if you have no significant data, you can still, in your discussion, point out, talk about the trends, even if they weren't significant, as long as you you know, make sure your reader understands you didn't have the significant data, but you could still interpret the potential um, interpretations of your trends, right, if they were to carry out and with uh, further studies. Uh, when discussing each result, you could also point out any potential, if there's an important issue um, or a thing to keep in mind, right, so you might say, well, we found that the worms were not able to avoid the pathogen serratia. We only applied, we only used one worm strain and serratia. Uh, it would be interesting to see if this holds true when we expose to other path potential pathogens. Um, something like that, right? So contextualize your results, point out potential issues. Um, Maybe, while we didn't see a trend, this could have been due to 
major contamination issues that confounded our data, or potentially if we had used longer time points, we might have been able to observe this trend. Yep, something like that, okay? Um, then you can also point out future work that you think should be done, right? So what were the next steps in following your experiments? Would you do you need more replicates with this? Would you suggest exploring it with different pathogens? What might those be? Um, if you know you explored one mutant in this pathway, would there be other pathways of mutants that you'd want to try with similar experiments? And then, right, so further, and that abstraction is trying to move from your specific research question that you answered to how would I answer the next question? How would I expand my findings to a slightly bigger question? And then you bring it back to your big overall field in terms of how does this contribute to our general understanding of pathogen avoidance or you know whatever your big picture question is and how could this potentially right so you're allowed to extend beyond the specifics but speak to this general research area that you're working in um, and make extrapolations a little bit beyond your own work Right, so this, these experiments and future experiments could lead to a better understanding of pathogen avoidance in organisms. Right, so something like that. Don't overstate, but something like that. Right. Um, okay, so for the abstract, that basically is just going to be almost a summary of your entire paper with one to two sentences covering each section. So you'll start with your introduction, which should start with that big picture, right? Give us a context, give us why we care, and then move into your specific question. In order to address this question, we did we studied C. elegans behavior in the presence of this pathogen and this chemical, right? So just a one sentence on methods. I don't want to know anything about numbers of plates or replicates um, or any any of that level of detail, right? One sentence. For your methods, maybe two sentences for your methods. All right, then your results. What were the one or two big findings, most important trends that you found? And then your discussion, tie this back to the big picture for your reader.